don't be seduced by the triangle, okay? That's not the point of the lesson, all right? Stay cool. I know, I know those triangles are beckoning to you, Dale. Triangles. I can't get enough of the triangles, but chill out. No, I didn't. I embarrassed some kid named Dale. He, nobody knows that's him. All right. There are 17 people in the world that know of which Dale I speak. And that's you guys. And you are all already here. Who do you think watches these things? I have analytics on them. You know who doesn't watch these things? Any of you. Zero views on almost all of my videos. So what difference does it make what I say? Zero views from this class. Zero. You surprised I don't know how to do the math. Zero views. What were you doing last night? Whoa, I saw this kid. <laughs> he tried to go skating on a lake and he fell right in. Oh, so you were on YouTube. Yeah. Did you do your math homework? No, I didn't know how to do it. Oh, really? But I watched Sharknado. I got this new idea for a movie. These kids in a town have a lake that freezes and then somebody lets go a baby shark in the lake under the ice and then all winter it grows and then in summer it bursts through and it starts eating everybody. <laughs> We're going to call it Mill Lake Shark 1 because I know they're going to make 17 of them. All right. Okay. Before we go any further... I need to discuss something with you guys so you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to ask you a question. You are all going to give me the wrong answer. Okay? Every single one of you. It's all right. Okay. Is everybody ready for the question? Okay. I'm going to ask the question, and you're going to yell out the answer. And the answer you're going to yell out is going to be wrong. But most of you are still not going to be able to hold yourself back and not yell out the answer. Okay? Are you ready? What is a variable. Oh, sad. Not even yelling out the wrong answer. Oh, uh, the letter. Hey, that's the wrong answer, but that's okay. At least you yelled it out. A letter is what we use to show a variable. What's a variable, Steve? A number. Some number. Some number, we're getting warmer. We're getting warmer. What was that, Kian? A symbol that represents a number. That's also a good definition. A variable is an unknown number. Okay? We don't know what it is. And it's variable because it can be anything. All right? That's the definition that you already know. It's already in your head. But I'm going to change it slightly in this unit. Because as we talked about yesterday, this unit has two variables, doesn't it? An X and a Y. Because we're now looking at two number lines, yes? So I'm going to change the definition of variable to something that includes what you already know, but adds to it. And that new definition, and again, you can write this down, you should write this down, but it is up to you. A variable is anything, anything we can count that changes. So, can I count the number of students that are in my class? Yeah. Yes. Is that number different every single day? Yeah. Yes. Because TJ was here yesterday, is not here today. Right? So, is the number of kids in my class a variable? Yes. And what would be a good letter to use to represent that variable? X, we could use X. Absolutely. Everybody understand? So how would I write that? X equals the students in class.
Does everybody understand? Because that number is unknown right now, right? When I wake up in the morning, I know some of you are going to be here, don't I? But do I know how many? No. No. So it's an unknown number, so it's a variable. Are you all cool with that? And any time you can count it, you can make a variable for it. Because until you count it, do you know? No, you don't, right? I got a bag of Chinese treats here. Do you know how many Chinese treats are in that? No. So this is a variable, isn't it? Could we count it? And then we would know, wouldn't we? Right? Everybody cool? So right now, this is X Chinese treats. Treats is really the wrong word because they're really gross. They're so disgusting. What is it? I don't even know. I think it's a date, but I'm not sure. They taste a little like flat Coke. Like Coke the pot, flat cola. And there's a giant pit in the middle of them that you don't know is in there. You bite into it and you hit the pit. It's They're horrible. But my Chinese exchange student brought them back for me from China. I was telling the story yesterday in some of my other classes, like, oh, we want to try them. Most people don't want to try them because when I say these are gross, people are like, no. Knock yourself out, big guy. They're dried fruit, man. They don't expire. It's like, son of a gun. It's like, uh... All right. Who's got the cojones? Don't even know how to get into them, man. How do the Chinese kids eat their treats? It's a workout for the mind and the Oh, it looks so bad. I know, it looks like a poo. Come get one. There's a pit in the middle of it. Be careful. I know. Okay, go, okay, geez. It doesn't look appetizing. And it's, I've eaten one. I haven't cut them open yet. We got a math to do first. I'll cut them open in a minute. The three bravest people have started. I don't even like the smell of them. I just shove in my mouth. Careful, don't chew the pit. In the middle of it, there's a pit. How is it? Well, it tastes like flat cola, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So everybody cool? Understand what a variable is? How is it? How is it? Who got the other one, Dale? What? How is it? You want it? You want it? You got to spit the pits out in the garbage. Don't leave them. They're no good. Today he gave my son a treat. Like he brought all his stuff back from China, his two suitcases. And my son went down to wake him up yesterday and he says, Dad, yeah? Sean didn't take any clothes to China. What do you mean? He took two suitcases and I carried them back. They were heavy. It's like they're all filled with food. I don't know, man. I watch border security. Yeah, we do. Um, well, he, you just have to declare it. and None of it's meat. I know. So um, he brought back some... Gum. Gum in the summer. And he says to my wife, hey, you want to try some of this? And my wife says, sure, okay. So she starts chewing on it. She says, it tastes horrible. And yeah, of course. And a couple of minutes after she starts chewing it, knock yourselves out. I warned you. A couple of minutes after she starts, a couple of minutes after she starts chewing it, he says, hey, I should warn you. That might make you feel a little drunk. 
And my wife's like, I'm driving. What are you doing? He gave one of them to my son today. I didn't know what it was. He was in the back seat. And he says, hey, Sinjin, you want one? And Sinjin says, sure, because my son's nice. Puts in his mouth. Chinese kid gets, chi- yeah, Chinese kid gets out of the car. Sinjin says, bore. As soon as he walks away, we drive away a little bit. Sinjin rolls down the window. <laughs> it's so gross. My wife has decided that anything Sean offers, she's going to politely decline. Tastes seem to be very different in China. I don't think so. Huh? It was okay. I know. It's just, I think I really think it tastes like Coke. What's the Sean. All right. So we're gonna do some math. So is everybody cool? Everyone's cool with this. Okay. Now, so with our new definition of a variable, anything that we can count. Here I have a pattern that has been repeating, right? right? What are the two things that I can count in this pattern? Dale. Oh, it's consistent states and it has to be Okay, so Dale says one of the things I can count is the number of sticks, right? What is the other thing you can count? Right. The number of the shape. Right? So this is one number of the shape, and it uses three sticks. Everyone understand? Everyone cool with that? Because those are the two things we're counting. We're counting each shape. And then we're counting the number of sticks that we use to make it. Is everyone okay? Yeah? All right. So, now that you're cool with that, in this white space over here, we got to do a little bit more definite, or uh, uh, a little bit more work. So the first thing I want you to do is write an equation. What do I need to get an, equ- an equation? What? I need some math. What else? Pardon me? Some numbers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something to do math upon. Yes. And? And it has to equal something. Good. So. In math. In math. If we know the numbers, equations are easy, aren't they? 3 plus 4 is 7, yes? Is 3 plus 4 equals 7 an equation? Yeah. Does it use any variables? A variable is an unknown number. No, so there's no variables. But in this case, we have two variables, don't we? So our equation must have how many variables? Two. There you go. All right. So the first thing we got to talk about is variables. Oh, I don't want to write that in red, dummy head. Variables are independent. And I'm going to highlight that word because I want you to know that word. Or dependent. Now, you guys are very smart kids. You don't feel like it sometimes, but you actually are. What does the word independent mean? In English, not math class. Forget about math class. Marcus, you can stand all by yourself, right? Right? Everybody understands that, yeah? Are any of you independent right now? No. No, why? That's not the definition I was looking for. You're getting warmer. Pardon, Kian? Okay, we can do that physically, yes. If the chair was removed, you would fall on the ground. So therefore, you are not independent. I was kind of more going with somebody else pays for your food and your shelter and your clothes and things like that. But that's okay. So we are all we all know what independent means, we all know what dependent means, right? 
So every variable is either independent or dependent. Yes? All right. So an independent variable, the independent variable, the IV, is the variable that is the same for everyone. And the dependent variable, the dv, changes when the iv changes. So here's what I'm, I'm going to give you guys an example that doesn't apply to this, okay? We're going to use what I'm about to tell you to figure this question out. Everybody cool? So you don't need to write anything down, we just got to think for a second. I work at McDonald's. Okay, I go to work for a four-hour shift, and I get paid $11 an hour. Everybody cool? All right. What are the two things that I am counting when I, with that situation I just described? Money. Money and? Well, somebody said it over there. Pardon, Kian? Hours. Those are the two things I'm counting. So what are my two variables? Money and hours. Cool. Now I've told you that all our variables are either independent or dependent. Yes? And independent variables are the same for everyone. Everybody understand that? So, of those two variables, hours and money, which one is the same for everybody in the world? Hours, aren't they, Sam? Because right now, are you guys passing an hour? Are you being paid? No. Do you understand? So hours are the independent variable. And your pay depends on your hours. If you don't go to work, do you get paid? No. If you go to work for one hour, do you get paid? How much? How much in the, ex the example I just gave you? I get paid eleven dollars now. If I go to work for one hour, how much do I get paid? Eleven dollars. If my independent variable changes, so I go from one hour to two hours, does my dependent variable change? Yes, because now I have twenty-two dollars. Does everybody understand? Can my dependent variable, which is my pay, change by itself? If I don't go to work, do I get paid? No, sometimes. Do you understand what I am saying? The dependent variable cannot change without the independent variable changing. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so let's look at our situation we have here. I have two things, number of sticks and the number of the shape. We are calling the shapes figures. You can see right here, I have F and I have N for my two variables, yes? Which one of those is independent, do you think? And which one is dependent, do you think? You got a 50-50 shot. Think about the example I just gave you with hours and pay. Which of those two is independent? Well, no, we've got figure number and number of sticks now, Dale. The F is independent or dependent? It's independent. Why do you think so, Stephen? One sec, Jamin. You must have a reason. You didn't just guess, because I can see that you're thinking about it. You come back. Think about it for a second. I'm going to give Jamin and Ethan a chance, and maybe you'll come up with your definition, because they might be wrong. Jamin. Yeah. You're much, that's very close to the real definition. Ethan. 
Yeah, right? Let me show you this. What if, close your eyes. Everybody has to be nice and close their eyes. I just drew a different figure there. Do you know what figure I drew? No, but you know it's the first figure, don't you? Does everybody understand? So all of you know the first thing I draw is the first figure, but you don't know what I drew. So therefore, it's the independent variable. Do you all understand what I'm saying? And I drew a circle. You can open your eyes now. Everybody cool with that? So this side is my independent variable. And this side is my dependent variable. Always. Everybody cool? That's how you make this kind of chart. Everybody good? So we've talked about dependent variable. We've talked about independent variable. The only thing we haven't done is made an equation yet, have we? So let's make an equation. This is what's really happening. Does this give me an equation, though? Eventually it will, because I'm going to teach you how. But right now, looking at it, does it give you an equation? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So let's show you exactly how you get an equation out of this. Let's start here. The first figure has how many sticks? Three. Okay. Does everyone agree? It's not a trick. You can look. You can see the first figure's got three sticks, right? Figure number two. Does it have those same three sticks? Yep. But then it's got two more, doesn't it? Okay. What about the next figure? It's got three, and then it's got the two from the first one, and then what? Then it's got two more, doesn't it? What about the fourth one? Three plus two plus two plus two, doesn't it? And the fifth one? Now, you guys aren't stupid. Are math guys lazy? Do they like writing that? What is the math guy shortcut to adding the same thing over and over again? Pardon? Not powers. Powers is the math guy shortcut to multiplying. What's the short guy, the math guy shortcut to adding? Multiplying, isn't it? Two times three is the same as three plus three, isn't it? Okay. So this is multiplying, isn't it? So what's another way I could write this? Three plus... What have I got there? Four twos, right? Three plus two times how many? Four. Does everybody see that? Everyone agree? Okay. So what would this guy's shortcut be? Three plus two times what? Three. What would this guy's shortcut be? Three plus two times two. What would this guy's shortcut be? Three plus two times one. Does everyone see that? Is everyone cool with that? Okay. Now, let's look at our letters. Where do you see one, two, three, and four? See them right here, don't you? Yeah. So what is happening to this F every time over here? Where does the F go? There's F of 1, where, or the F that's 1. Where did it go? It ended up right here, didn't it? And the 2 ended up here, didn't it? And the 3 ended up there, and the 4 ended up there. Does everyone agree? So what am I doing to every F? Adding? Adding? Timesing it by two, aren't I? Everyone agrees? You can see right there, two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four. Everyone sees it, right? So I know that my independent variable has to change by doubling, doesn't it? Does everyone agree? Everyone sees what I've done there, right? Now let's check something. There's a one, There's an, that one is the F, right? 
So what could I write right there instead of F? I could write 1, couldn't I? Because this says 1 is F. Is everyone cool with that? Okay. So what is 2 times 1? It's 2, isn't it? That equals 2. But when F was 1, what did I need to have? What did I need? You guys can count. I need it to be 3, don't I? So what do I have to do to this 2 to make 3? I got to add 1, don't I? So if I do 2F plus 1, will I get the 3 that I need? 2F plus 1, 2F is 2, plus 1 gets me my 3, doesn't it? So if I take my F, I double it, and I add 1, I should get my number of sticks, shouldn't I? Well, let's check. What's my number of sticks here? 2. What letter does that go for? F. So, 2 times 2 plus 1. What is 2 times 2? Plus 1. What did I need? I needed 5, didn't I? So do I know the equation now? What is it? N equals 2F plus 1. Does everybody see that? We'll, we'll practice it a lot, but it makes sense, right? Okay, now look at the shortcut that I'm going to give you. What's happening every time? Plus 2. And we know that's times 2, don't we? What if it was plus 3, plus 3, plus 3? It would be times 3. What if it was 5, 5, 5, 5? Plus 5, times 5, right? So this 2 always goes with the F. And then once you know what goes with the F, you just figure it out by doing what we did here. 2F gave me 2, but I needed it to be 3, so I just had to add 1. Everybody with me? All right, so we've got our equation, but the question said, how many sticks are in what figure? Read the question. What figure am I looking for? No. How many sticks are in the tenth figure? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What number do I need for F now? I need the tenth figure. So what number goes in for F? What number goes in for F? No. I want the tenth figure. So what number goes in here? Ten. Two times ten. It is twenty-one. Twenty-one. So what goes in for n over here? Twenty-one. Got it? Everybody cool? We're going to practice it a lot, but that's the basics. All right, let's go to the next one. Which of these is my independent variable? It's already in a chart, so you know which is the independent variable, don't you? Is it the S or the H? The S is my independent variable and the H is my dependent variable, right? Everybody got it? Okay. So what's happening here? Right. Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. Agreed? What's the shortcut, Keon, to plus 4, plus 4, plus 4? times 4, right? So this times 4 goes with my S, doesn't it? You guys are smart kids. What's happening over here? Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, yes? So if this times 4 goes with my S, what's happening here? What's the shortcut to plus 1, plus 1, plus 1? Times 1. And that times 1 must go with my H, correct? But when we multiply something by 1, we don't change it, do we? So it's just H, right? So 
The 4 goes with the S. The 1 goes with the H. So the number of hits is how many times the number of swings. What do we do to the number of swings? Times 4. 4, oh, I should do that in blue. Is 4 times the number of swings plus what? Plus 1. See how smart you guys are? So it's 4S plus 1, isn't it? Now, the question says, I'm going to do 10 swings. So what do I put in for S? 10. 4 times 10 plus 1. What's 4 times 10? 40 plus 1? 41. Everyone see how easy it is? The numbers down this side go with that variable. The numbers down that side go with that variable. Easy peasy lemon squeeze, isn't it? Everybody ready? Good. Let's see what we can do with this. Tegan goes to a carnival. That's how much it costs. Right? Okay. So now we got to think to ourselves. We need to write an equation. What are the two things that I'm counting? I'm counting rides, so I'm counting rides, and what else am I counting? Remember, a variable is something that changes. Pardon, Kian? How much it costs to get into the fair? Absolutely right, rides and cost. One of those is dependent, one of those is independent. The entrance fee doesn't change, so how can it be a variable? The entrance fee is five bucks, so it's not going to change. So which of these is independent and which is dependent? Two dollars per ride is independent. You're absolutely right, Dale. Because, because that's what's going to change the cost, isn't it? Or, if Ethan goes to the fair, and Dale goes to the fair, and Sam goes to the fair, and I go to the fair, do we all pay something? Yeah. Right. Good. Okay, here we go. So, we've got it set up, which means we got to make our chart, don't we? What goes on the left, the independent or the dependent? Independent. So what's that? Rides. Which we are going to say is R. Everyone agree? And what goes over here? Cost, which we are going to say is C. Everybody understand? Okay. I'm the old fart. I'm not going to go on any rides. I'm just going to take you guys to the fair. So what is my amount of rides there? Zero. How much does it cost me to go to the fair? Five bucks. Everyone agrees? Okay. One ride. Do I still pay five bucks? I do, don't I? Because I pay five bucks to walk through the door. But do I pay more now? How much more? Two dollars more. Yeah? Okay. If you go on two rides, you pay five bucks? Plus two times what? Now I've gone on two rides. Agreed? Three rides. Do I pay five bucks? Plus two times what? Three. If I go on four rides, five plus two times four, right? What if I go on R rides? Any number of rides. What's the equation? Five plus two. Right. So what do I put there? R. So now, what does that mean? That means cost equals five bucks plus two dollars per ride. Tegan goes on four rides, so how do I figure this out? Five plus two times how many rides? Four. What's two times four? Plus five? So it costs $13 to go on the rides. Do you get it? 
It's pretty easy, isn't it? You decide which one is independent. You put it on the left. You decide which one is dependent. You put it on the right. And then you just sort it out. Right? Everybody ready? All right. I don't know if I believe you yet, but we'll see. My man Marcel takes a summer job at a book packaging plant. Gets paid $50 a day plus $2 for every box he packs. So it's the first thing I have to decide. Independent and dependent. I got an IV. I got a DV. Which is which? What are the two things I'm counting? First, I got to decide that. What are the two things that change for my man Marcel? He gets pay. And? Pay in boxes. Those are the two variables, yes? Because his pay is going to be different every day. And the amount of boxes he packs is going to be different every day, yeah? Okay, so which one is independent? Boxes. Right? Because everybody that works in that warehouse is packing boxes, aren't they? So my independent is boxes. What's my dependent? Pay. Because my pay depends on how many boxes I fill, doesn't it? Okay, so let's make our chart. What goes on the left? Boxes, B. What goes on the right? P, pay. If I pack zero boxes, how much do I get paid? No. Read the question. 50 bucks. Because he's probably doing other stuff there, right? He's probably sweeping or making the boxes to put stuff in. You with me? Okay. So he's getting 50 bucks. What if he packs one box? Does he get 50 bucks? Plus two, right? What do we do? Two boxes. 50 bucks plus two times two. What if he does three boxes? 50 plus two times three. What if he does B boxes? 50 plus two B. Does everyone see how easy it is? So pay equals 50 plus two B. He packed 20 boxes that day. So 50 plus 2B. What goes in for B? 20. 50 plus 2 times 20. What's 2 times 20? 40. What's 50 plus 40? 90. So Marcel got paid $90 that day. Is everybody with me? Everybody cool? Now, I want to show you guys something. You guys built this chart, right? Because we were in charge of it, correct? What if somebody else was in charge of it? What if it looked like this? If it looked like that, what would we do? Well, that one we go plus three, plus three, plus three. And the three goes with the B, doesn't it? I mean, not three, idiot. <laughs> two, two. Plus two, plus two. The two goes with the B, right? So it's 2B, right? That's a zero, so what would I put there? Zero. I need to get it to 50, right? So what do I add to 2B to get it to 50? B is zero. Two times B is zero. How much do I have to add to get up to 50? Plus 50, and then see how it's the same equation, gotten both ways. Everybody understand? Yeah? Okay. You need to do, where's my book, where's my book? On the book, 
I'm the book. I'm the book. I'm the book. I'm the book. Um. It was indeed. Page. Page 147 to 148. 